Hello, board game brothers and sisters. I'm Adam Singer, and welcome to another episode where I'll be letting you know of all the board games launching on Kickstarter and GameFound over the next week. If you're new here, we do this every single week going over all the upcoming campaigns, so if you want to stay up to date, this is definitely the place to be. But before I get started, I do like to go over some news and announcements that I just found out about. And the first one here is that we did just get Everdell Duo announced, and this is going to be a two-player game of the game Everdell, which I haven't played, but I do have it here still in the wrap. But the thing about two-player games is that they are a lot easier to table, and I know this is a game that a ton of people like, so I am really excited about this one because I'm sure it still will capture that Everdell feel, but distill it into something that's a little bit easier to get to the table, and two-player games are always a nice option to have. This one is going to be launching really, really soon. I don't have an exact date for you yet, but it will be launching in the month of August, so if you do want to get all the details on how this game actually plays, you can always subscribe down below, and I will be covering this in much more detail during the week of its launch. Launch. And next we do have another campaign for the game Barrage, so if you did miss this campaign this is another opportunity to get your hands on it and this is going to be offering all the existing contents as well as two new companies added into the game and it's going to be offering it all in a brand new big box solution. You don't have an exact launch date for this one yet but I did cover it in the past so if you do want to know exactly how it plays in much more detail you can go ahead and search the game with the term shelf clutter and it should show up. This is a Euro game that uses a mechanism of running water as players are powering and constructing different dams and there's going to be water trickling through the board depending on how players construct the different buildings. A really interesting game and it is one that I almost backed and we'll see if I can withstand backing it when this one comes around. But either way it is one to look forward to and I will give you the launch date as soon as I find that out for myself. Next, we do have Cyberpunk 2077, the board game. This one's going to be launching on September 3rd, and of course, this one is based on the video game, so I'm sure they're going to be moving over a lot of those mechanisms that you know and love from the game into a board game experience, and who doesn't want a Keanu Reeves miniature? I haven't checked this one out in too much detail myself, but there is a ton of info on the game found page already, so if you want to check that out, you can feel free to do so. But of course, I will cover this one during the week of its launch, so if you'd rather I do the work, feel free to subscribe down below. Other than that, I do always like to give a quick mention to Alex over at Board Game Co because him and I do work together keeping track of all these upcoming campaigns. I do these every single week, but Alex posts a video at the start of each month, letting you know of the heavy hitters for that month. And July is coming to an end here and we're moving into August, so he should have his August video up very, very soon. I definitely want to check that out and get a little sneak peek of some of the games to come. Also, if you're interested in the historical war game genre, you'll definitely want to check out Zilla Blitz because he does a similar video, but it's all focused on those historical war games. There's a bunch of other crowdfunding platforms dedicated to these, which both Alex and I don't normally cover. And he has a ton of knowledge in the genre and he'll definitely do a better job than me. So feel free to check out his channel. I will have both him and Alex's channel linked in the description down below. And that's everything I got for an intro. And this one is a bit of a slower week, so we don't have quite as many games as usual. But there's still some exciting ones and always a few surprises as well. So let's check them out. And the first campaign we have launches on July 29th. And I think you should all back this game for one very specific reason. I mean, it does have John DeClaire as the designer who's famous for all the work that he's done and Ian O'Toole who does fantastic artwork. And AEG has a really great track record of just pumping out amazing games. And if you look at the original game, it does have an 8.2, but all of that pales in comparison with the fact that this one is launching on my birthday. And I can't think of a better reason to spend some money than that. This campaign is going to be introducing a brand new expansion to the game Dead Reckoning, and this new expansion is called Port of Call. But if you're not familiar with how Dead Reckoning plays, I did already cover that one in the past, and I will roll that footage for you in a minute here. But first, I'll let you know a little bit about the expansion and what it's going to be adding into the game. First of all, this is an expansion that's just going to be adding a bunch of new content that you can just mix in with the game, whether you're playing with the base game or with any of the previously released expansions. This is going to be adding a bunch of new Sailor ability cards that can replace your deckhand crew, eight new shipboards, each with their own asymmetric abilities, adding a bunch more variability into the game, and also adding different incentives depending on the board that you choose. There's going to be a couple new ship upgrades introduced with this expansion as well to augment your ships in some very new ways. Five new ocean boards, nine new achievement tokens. But my favorite aspect of this expansion is the new mechanism it adds into the game, which is the concept of exploding cubes. If you're familiar with this game, you know that it uses a cube tower. Anytime that you launch your cannons, we're going to be dropping cubes into the top of that tower, and they're going to be rolling out into different areas on a board, having a different impact depending on where they land. This new type of cube actually has an icon on one side of the cube, and if that side happens to roll up, 
then it's going to be counting as if a cannon was rolled. This adds a really nice layer because now not only do you care where that cube lands on the board, but you also care if that icon happens to show. You'll be able to gain these cubes in a few different ways, but the primary way is through the card crafting and the different cards that you're able to acquire. In addition to this new expansion, this campaign is also going to be introducing a new big box solution that's designed to fit into a calyx, and it also has front-facing doors that open outwards, so you don't even have to take it out of the calyx in order to get to all the different components. All the components also have a spot in each of the different drawers, and it will allow you to keep that cube tower built and not have to rebuild it every time that you play the game. If you're interested in card crafting or pirate themed games or both, you'll definitely want to check this one out. And like I said, I did cover the original campaign back when it launched, so I will roll that previous footage for you if you're not familiar with this game. But you can find a link to the campaign in the description below, and of course, click to get notified. But this is a competitive card crafting 4X game that plays 1 to 4 players and takes about 90 to 150 minutes to play. And this is coming from the designer John D. Clare, who created and kind of pioneered the whole card crafting mechanism. I'm sure he wasn't the first one to do it, but he is the one that made it famous. This one would have been my pick of the week, but luckily I don't have to do that because the Discord has done that for me because this one is our Discord pick of the week. And it's no surprise because this game offers a lot to be excited about. First off, the game offers you a lot of different paths to victory. In this game, you're trying to complete achievements and there are a whole bunch of different achievements to complete. You can either explore enough islands, deliver enough cargo, gain a certain amount of gold, own enough buildings, achieve a really high level crew or a really high level ship, win battles, sink ships, and many others but the catch here is that you only need to complete four of these in order to win the game so you can kind of plan out what you want to go for but if the luck doesn't roll in your favor you can always pivot to something else that seems a little bit more attainable and i really love that option in a game and like I said, this is a card crafting game. So the way that this works is that this is also a deck building game. So you're going to be recycling your deck. But the interesting thing about it is that you'll be able to get different upgrades. And these upgrades come in the form of clear cards. And you'll be able to slide those into a sleeve in order to administer different upgrades to your existing cards. And you can actually do this multiple times as long as those different upgrades don't overlap with each other. And yes, there's a really cool ship here that you're going to be using as a cube tray anytime you want to blast your cannons at the other ships and I will get back to that shortly. But the way that this game works is that players are going to be putting out a grid of cards and the first row of that grid is going to be revealed with the other ones being hidden. And beside each row you're going to have each of your advancement decks within a box and these are going to be organized into their different levels in ascending order and as you advance throughout the game you're going to gain access to more and more advanced upgrade cards. Each player also has their own upgradable ship and ship token that they'll be using to track their progress out on the board and track their progress upgrading their ship. And you'll be able to do different things like add additional sails in order to move faster, add additional cannons in order to have more attack power, and of course upgrade your crew for all sorts of different benefits. But the game's played over a series of rounds until a player is able to complete four of those different achievements. And there's going to be two phases that players are going through. The first phase is the main phase, and this is where players can take as many actions as they want or are able. And you'll be able to do all sorts of different things like load and unload cargo and coins to and from your ship and your current location. Or you can also rearrange the cargo and coins on your ship or even jettison it into the sea if you think someone might be trying to steal it from you. One of your more limited actions is your movement action because you'll only be able to move as many spaces as sails that you have on your ship, but you can split this up however you want and perform actions before, during, or after your movements. And the different locations might have some different options for you. For example, if you visit a location with an advancement card, then you'll have the option to purchase that card. Or if you visit a location with another ship, that might result in an encounter depending on if you or the other ship is aggressive. And of course, you'll also be able to play the cards from your hand in order to perform different abilities and get different bonuses to do things like gain control of the different islands, generate resources, construct buildings, or upgrade your ship and crew. And the battles in this game can happen in a variety of different ways. You can battle against other players, NPC merchant ships, or even against the player's buildings. And during the battle, players will be able to play battle cards in order to get different abilities or upgrades that can help them against their opponent. But the main portion here is that you're going to be gathering up as many cubes as you have cannons and you're going to be dropping them into the cube tray. And you're going to be resolving those cubes depending on where they fall in the cube tray and these can do different things like grant you different resources, inflict damage on your opponent, or earn you crowns which is what you want to be able to win the battle. Which is a really neat mechanism because you could actually take more damage than the other ship but still win the battle which I think is really cool. 
But what else is really cool is that there's actually a spot on the cube tray that's called the exploding cube. And if your cube lands on that, you're gonna pick it up as well as another cube of the same color and then drop it back into the tray. So this creates a sort of chaining event where that can happen repeatedly, allowing you to get more and more cubes into battle and just adding more excitement to the game. And after all the actions are taken, we move into the cleanup phase where players will manage the board, decide if they want to be in pirate or merchant mode for the next round, and then they'll also be able to sleeve any of the advancements that they've collected, and they'll be discarding their hand and drawing back up to their hand limit. And one thing to note is that there is already two expansions added to the game, and these are just going to add more content and some more mechanisms as well, but the game is played over a series of sagas with these expansions, and each saga is going to be adding more of that content in. And it's just a really great way to add a little bit of mechanisms at a time instead of just adding a whole bunch to learn all at once. And the Letters of Mark is also a Saga expansion, so this is going to be adding a third Saga to the game, but it also comes with some non-Saga related content as well that you can just go ahead and include in your game regardless of how you're playing it. And as always, if you're interested to learn more, I have links in the description below. Now launching on July 30th, we have the Button Shy reprint campaign, and this is going to be offering three different games to start, including Death Valley, PC Yum Super Slopes, as well as their associated expansions. There's nothing new here, so I'm not going to be getting into how each of these games play, but I'm sure they will have videos posted on the campaign once it goes live. But the way that these campaigns work is they do start the campaign with a few games offered, and then they're going to be running votes throughout the campaign to see which other of their previously created games that you also want included on this campaign. So if there is a button shy game that you're looking to get your hands on, definitely check out the campaign and take part in those votes. As always, I do have a link to the campaign in the description down below. Also launching on the 30th is a game that I already covered like four weeks in a row here, so I'm not going to get into this one over again, but I do have previous footage for it, so if you do want to check it out, you can go ahead and search that up, but this is for the Wacky Puppies Not Safe for Work edition. I can only talk about these games launching again and again and again so many times before it starts to get on my nerves. I don't want it to get on your nerves as well, so let's just move on to the next one. Also on the 30th, we have Headless Horseman, and this one is a competitive game where players are going to be starting at one end of the board, and your goal is to reach the other side first in order to win the game. The catch with this is that midway through the game, players are all going to be drawing different roll cards, and one of those cards is going to be the Headless Horseman. Players are going to be taking turns using action cards in order to move around the various locations out on the board, and there are different locations that do have some special effects. But during the first half of the game, you're just trying to get to the other side of the board, but then once one player becomes the Headless Horseman, they're going to be using their action cards in order to move into the locations of the other players, inflict damage on them, and hopefully bring their health down to zero, because if they're able to do that, then those players become Headless Horsemen as well. As this continues, you're just going to have more more and more players ganging up on the players that are still alive in the game. And if any one of those players are able to make it through the forest to the other side of the board alive, then they win the game. But if everyone gets turned into a headless horseman, then the headless horsemen win, or rather everyone loses. A really interesting concept here, and I really like how once you know that you've already lost the game, your whole goal is to just try and make everyone else lose. If that sounds like fun to you, you can check out the campaign, I will have it linked down below. Also launching on July 30th, we have Meeple style gamer socks. And one thing I know for sure as an adult is that you can just never have too many socks. I used to hate getting socks as a gift for Christmas for my relatives, but now it is a welcome surprise. There's a bunch of really fun designs here, all centered around board gaming. And if you want to keep up with current trends, you definitely want to get socks like this because these are the socks that do cover your calves, which apparently is a big hit with the kids these days. I remember when I used to wear these style of socks back when I was in grade school. And then I just continued to wear them forever until the trend changed into ankle socks. And then people were giving me hard times. So apparently I'm a boomer for wearing ankle socks these days, but I do find them more comfortable. Fun little campaign here, and if you want to check it out, I will have it linked down below. Also launching on the 30th, we have the game Food for Thought. And this one is a new edition of the game Consumption, but it's also going to be including the two previously released expansions. I actually didn't cover this game back when it originally launched, but looking into this game, I think it looks like a lot of fun, and I think it incorporates the theme into the game really, really well. And for those reasons, this one is my own personal pick of the week. And there aren't too many images on this new BGG page, so the images I will be showing you are going to be from the original consumption game, so there might be some changes with this new printing of the game. This is a game that plays over six rounds, where players are going to be using actions to do things like shop for ingredients in all sorts of different ways, 
gain different recipes, and then cook those recipes in order to get that food into your belly before it ends up expiring. Depending on your diet, there's going to be certain foods that you want to eat and certain foods that you might want to avoid and other foods that you might want a particular amount of. But I'm sure we've all been known to eat a little too much or maybe not exactly the right thing all the time. And in order to get those things out of your body, you're going to be taking part in different activities and engaging in all sorts of exercise. At the start of the game, each player is going to have their own asymmetrical board representing their diet. And this will outline the types of victory points that you can gain or lose depending on the type of diet that it is. For example, if you're a vegetarian, you don't want to be eating any meat. Whereas if you are fasting, you don't really want to eat anything. Luckily, each of the players do also draw a specific food-related career card, which will grant you some sort of special ability that you can take advantage of throughout the game. But on a turn, you're going to be placing your workers out on the main board or areas on your own personal board in order to take the associated action. And one of the main actions is just to gain the different types of food and put them into your refrigerator. And there's different ways to get the food. You might want to buy food at the market, depending on what's available there. Or you might want to get fast food, which allows you to get randomly drawn tokens. Or even go to the farmer's market, which can have different options, but usually do also come with a special effect. Other actions can get you recipe cards and allow you to cook the food in order to get it out of your refrigerator and into your belly before that food goes bad. Because any time that you gain an ingredient, it's going to be going on its associated location out on the refrigerator board. And every round of those are going to be moving forward, which means once they reach the end, they are essentially expired and worth negative victory points at the end of the game. This creates a bit of a timer, meaning that you'll want to get those recipe cards in order to use those ingredients before they go bad. But also you don't want to get those recipe cards too soon because if you get recipe cards that you don't end up using, those are also worth negative victory points at the end of the game as well. Meat goes bad the quickest, followed by the vegetables and dairy. And then things like water and wine and your wheat products, you're going to have a little bit more time with. As I mentioned, if you've eaten something that you probably shouldn't have, you can always fall back on the activity cards in order to get those worked out of your body. Or you might just want to do that anyway because these cards are with victory points. So if they're going to be getting you more victory points for doing the activity rather than keeping that food on your board, it's probably in your best interest. But the game continues like this and at the end of the six rounds, players are going to be adding and subtracting victory points depending on the structure of their board and depending on the recipes that they're able to complete or not complete. And then of course, adding any additional victory points from those activity cards. I really like how everything that scores in this game is intertwined with each other in some sort of way. And if this one looks like a game that you might enjoy as well, definitely feel free to check it out and I will have it linked down below. Also launching on the 30th, we have Limits of Glory Meta 1806, and this one is a 1-2 to two player historical war game, and I don't tend to go into the historical war games in as much detail, so if you do want more information on this one, definitely check out Zillow Blitz, who I have linked in the description below, because he definitely will be covering this one. But this is a game where you can play as either the French, British, Russian, Neapolitan, or Calabrian guerrillas. And you're going to be playing through various campaigns featuring any combination of those powers. But like I said, I'm not going to get into this one in too much detail. I don't cover the historical war games very much. But you can find a link to the campaign and Zillow Blitz in the description down below. And launching on August 1st, we have Ascending Fate. And this one is a miniature war game where players are going to be choosing a mission. And that's going to be determining the board setup, the mission components, and any special rules associated with it. The way that this game works is that players are going to be spending points in order to select their units for the game. And each unit is going to have a number of actions that can be spent over two activations within a round. Attacking and defending in this game works very different from a lot of other miniature war games that I've seen. Because the way that it works here is that you're going to have these hit zone cards. And the attacking player is going to be drawing body parts that indicate the hit zone that they're going to be attacking. But then the opposing player is going to be drawing defense cards, hopefully drawing a card that matches the hit zone that the attacker was aiming for because then they have successfully defended against that attack. Not a whole lot more info on this one right now, but if you do want to check it out, I will have it linked down below. And I know they do have a bunch of videos going into the details of this game, but they're all in German. So hopefully they'll have a bit more on the campaign for those of us that's Brecca English. And launching on August 3rd, we have Hidden Agendas, and this one's a competitive game where players take on the role of political operatives who each start with their own secret agenda card at the start of the game, outlining the legislation that they need to pass in order to gain points. The way the game works is that each player starts the game with some legislation cards as well as some starting cash, and then each round you're going to be playing your legislation cards into three different bills. 
These are represented by columns of cards, with each column having just three cards. Two of them face up and one of them face down, and the way that those are created is that players just take turns placing one of their legislation cards into any of those three stacks as they choose. After that's completed, players are going to be taking turns putting their vote tokens out on the different bills, voting on the one that they think should be removed. But while this is happening, players can negotiate and try to convince the other players to vote where they want them to. But if that doesn't quite work as you'd hoped, players can also use actions after all the voting tokens have been placed out, spending money in order to do things like move vote tokens somewhere else, or even modify the cards in various ways. This is going to end up with one of those columns discarded, and then you move into the next phase where you're going through the exact same sequence of events, except for this time you're voting on which column to keep. Once that's decided, you're going to be taking all those cards, including the face down one, and revealing it and then putting those cards into stacks depending on the type of legislation that they are. Once any of those stacks reaches at least 5 points, then that's going to be triggering the final rounds of the game, where players are trying to get the most points of their specific legislation type by the end of the game, but if any player is able to reach 10 points before that happens, then the game instantly comes to the end with that player being the winner. Each player does get additional money every single round, allowing you to continue to take those various actions. And a really nice aspect of this game is that you can also just reveal your secret agenda in order to gain access to its special abilities, which I think is a really nice aspect to this game. It's something that can be very powerful, but you'll also want to be strategic when you do that because it's going to be revealing to all the other players which type of legislation you are going for, giving you a huge disadvantage at the same time. But if you do it right, it can be a great way to win the game. If that sounds interesting to you, I will have this one linked in the description down below. And also launching on the third, we have New Beginnings. And this one is a two to six player abstract strategy game where the main board's gonna be made up of a bunch of different flowers, hazards like wasps and diseased bees, and the queen is gonna be located in the middle of the board. A neat aspect of this game is that there's actually six different types of bees that all operate a little bit differently, but all players are only going to be starting the game with their drone bees. You're going to have to gain resources by collecting nectar from those different flowers, and then you're going to be spending those resources in order to upgrade your drone bees into something new. On your turn, you're going to have three action points to spend across your bees and move them around the board and collect the various resources, and each of the bees' movement pattern is outlined on their specific tile, this is going to allow you to do things like forage nectar, stash honey, capture opponent bees, kill wasps, or dispose of diseased bees, or of course nurture larvae in order to repopulate, and then of course upgrade those drones into new types of bees. There are a bunch of free abilities that each of your bees can do, and these will vary depending on the type of bee that they are, but in order to even qualify to win this game, you do need to end the game with one of your drone bees, on one of the locations adjacent to the queen bee located in the middle of the board. Players are going to be gaining victory points from the different actions that they're able to perform, but then also by completing their own secret objectives. The player with the most points at the end of the game wins the game. And that's everything I got for you this week, but don't leave yet because we still got a few awesome giveaways to announce, and the first one is for a pledge for Jurassic Feud, and this one looks like a really fun dexterity style game where you're actually going to have these dino launchers where one's going to be more like a catapult and the other one's going to be more like a crossbow, but players are going to be setting up their forts on opposite ends of the table, putting their different units on the fort, and then trying to eliminate their opponent's units. You're also going to have a bunch of action cards that allow you with special effects and abilities that you'll be able to use throughout the game, and every time that you get one of your units removed from the game, you'll be able to draw another one of those cards, providing you with a little bit of a catch-up mechanic that is optional to play with. This giveaway is going to be for the Kickstarter edition of the game that gets you the base game as well as the Pangea expansion and the game mat set and all unlocked stretch goals. And to enter this giveaway, all you got to do is leave a comment down below with the hashtag feud. You can say anything that you want, but if you're looking for something in specific, since this is a game geared more towards kids, Maybe you could give us a recommendation of one of your favorite childhood movies or TV shows that you might suggest to some of the younger viewers on this channel. I'll just make the obvious suggestion here with The Land Before Time, which is a movie that I must have watched a thousand times when I was a kid. I'm pretty sure there's like a whole whack of movies in the series now, but definitely some good times and some good lessons on friendship there as well. And the next giveaway we have is for a pledge for Legacy at Sea, where players are going to be playing as asymmetrical pirates, sailing around and taking actions depending on the various spaces that they stop on. 
Players will also gain infamy depending on the decisions that they make. And each of the islands that you can visit will have a shifting market with some of those islands being a little more or less welcoming to you depending on how much infamy you've gained. It wouldn't be a pirate game without a bit of combat as well and you can attack the other players as well as merchant ships. You can actually choose if you want to battle using your cannons, your crew, or your maneuverability. And this giveaway is going to be for the set sail pledge which is going to get you a copy of the game as well as all the unlock stretch goals. And under this giveaway, same thing, just leave a comment down below, but for this one, just leave the hashtag legacy. And if you're looking for something in specific on this one, maybe you'd let us know one of your favorite pirates. For myself, I am a fan of One Piece, which gives me basically hundreds of options. And probably my number one choice would be Red Hair Shanks, but if I'm actually being real, he doesn't really hold a candle to Bond Clay. And our last giveaway for this week is for A Pledge for Verdun, and this is a game that I originally thought was a historical war game, but although it does have a World War I theme, this one is actually a trick-taking game, and it looks like a really fun trick-taking game. I'm excited to try this one out. At the start of this game, players are going to be putting out various tokens with rewards on them, but then putting a blockade token in front of it. And what you're trying to do is protect your reward tokens from your opponents, while also trying to acquire theirs. The way the trick taking works in this game is that each player is gonna have a hand of cards and you're gonna be paired with the person across from you on the table. Players are each gonna be taking turns playing cards with the total sum of you and your partner's cards adding up to your power for that trick. Whoever has the highest amount of power is gonna be winning that trick and that's gonna allow you to try and steal one of your opponent's reward tokens by first flipping the barricade token in front of it. Whatever value is there, you're going to be adding it to your opponent's side, but if you still have a higher value than that, then you're going to be able to take that reward token for yourself, usually giving you some amount of victory points. A neat aspect of this game is that the losing side is going to have to discard their highest card, and then the winning side is going to have to discard their lowest card, preventing them from using those cards in the future, but also whoever has the highest card remaining is going to be getting an additional special card that they're going to be able to add into their hand and use on future turns. This giveaway is going to get you a copy of the game and to enter in this giveaway just leave a comment down below with the hashtag Verdun. Just make sure that you're either in North America, the EU, or the UK because this giveaway is limited to those areas. And once again you can say anything that you want but I am interested to know how many of my viewers are interested to hear about the historical war games. I know this one isn't exactly a historical war game, but I tend to not cover those ones in as much detail, so I just kind of want to get an idea of how many people I'm letting down. Good luck in the giveaways, but now let's go ahead and draw the winners from last week's giveaways, which was for a pledge for Luthier as well as Pandora Celeste. And we're going to draw for Pandora Celeste first, and in order to do that, we're going to use this fancy application here. All these extra entries down here are bonus entries for my subscribers over on Ko-fi. I appreciate their support and they help me maintain this channel and continue to do what I do without taking any money from publishers or designers. I really do appreciate the support and I also do appreciate the support from all the viewers. So let's go ahead and draw those YouTube comments and draw the winner. And the winner of Pandora Celeste is Dicycling, who is one of our Ko-fi subscribers. So thanks so much for the support so far. Happy that you won yourself a sweet pledge here. I'll reach out to you and let you know that you won this pledge, or you can email me at adam at shelfclutter.com. Now let's go ahead and draw the pledge for Luthier, and we're going to do the exact same thing here. So let's draw a winner. And the winner of Luthier is Philip Stone 3116 Congratulations on the win here, and I know this is a game that a lot of people wanted to win, so make sure to hang on to this one tightly. Just email me at adam at shelfclutter.com, and I'll get that all sorted out for you. And that's everything I got for you this week. I hope there's something there that caught your interest. And I hope the audio on this video is okay because I did get a few new adapters just to work on my cable management and make setting up my laptop a little bit easier. And also get my laptop as far away from the microphone as possible because once I start filming, my laptop fans want to launch into space, which doesn't work too well when I'm trying to record. It terrifies me to touch anything of my setup here, so hopefully everything turned out okay. Other than that, we do have Gen Con coming up this next weekend here, and it's something that I really do want to attend. It almost feels like a rite of passage at this point. I do have a place to stay, and I am intending to go, but I'm just not 100% yet. I guess you'll find out for sure in my next episode, but if I do make it out there, and if you see me there, definitely stop to say hello. 
Love to play games, hang out, and do whatever. That's really the best part of conventions for me. I'll probably do a bit of walking around, but I imagine I'll be spending most of my time in the game room. That being said, I haven't been to Gen Con. Maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe there's a ton of things that I'll want to check out. I hope to find out, and I hope to see you there. But until next time, thanks so much for tuning in. Keep that shelf cluttered and the table full.